In this tutorial, we'll look at dimensioning your drawings in SOLIDWORKS. Now, there are lots of tools in SOLIDWORKS to make dimensioning our drawings easy. Uh, we can dimension drawings using the mouse gestures, and that's the very same as dimensioning a drawing in a sketch. You also have the Rapid Dimension tool and Auto Dimension and Dim Expert. So we've got a lot of options there for dimensioning our drawings. There are two main types of dimensions in SOLIDWORKS. There are model dimensions and reference dimensions or driven dimensions. Model dimensions come in from your model. So those dimensions that you added when you're in your sketches and when you were creating your features, you can bring those into your model using insert model items. Reference or driven dimensions are dimensions that you add in the drawing. These can be edited, but they don't actually drive the geometry. Model dimensions that you bring in from the model can be used to change your geometry from the drawing. When you create your dimensions, you can move them from one view to another by pressing the shift key, or you can copy them by pressing the control key. If you need to move multiple dimensions, you can first of all control select them and then use the shift key to move them. Multiple dimensions can be copied also by first using the control key to select the dimensions and then using it again to copy them. As we mentioned earlier, model items, and you'll find this on the annotation tab, uh, can be used to bring in your dimensions from your model. Here's some more information about dimensions on this slide. When you need to select dimensions in a drawing, if you use the dimensions filter and we press F5 to turn on the filter toolbar, that will allow us to filter for dimensions only. And then using the dimensions palette, icon and the icon looks like this and when it expands we can use this to auto arrange dimensions and add tolerances to our dimensions also. So the auto dimensions tool and that's the icon for it there is a very convenient way of automatically organizing your imported dimensions. And on the left here you have the before and here you have the after of using this tool. The dimension palette has some other tools here and you can experiment with these in your own time. You can also bring in whole callout. So this would be if you've used the whole wizard for counterbore and countersink holes and the like, you can bring those dimensions in using this tool here, the whole callout. Another option you have in dimension drawings is using the rapid dimension tool. And when you use this, you have this glyph uh, that appears and here it looks like this for a radial dimension and for linear dimensions. So you can use the tab key to flip which side you want the dimension to go in on your drawing. Another option you have, if you've got a complicated drawing, you could use datum dimensioning. Here's an example of vertical and horizontal ordinates. And this is the option here. And as part of the smart dimension tool, sometimes when you're putting in smaller dimensions, you might find you got a radius like this. And you can correct that by going into the leaders tab of the dimension properties and change it from smart to inside. And then the leader will look as shown here on this slide. And finally, this has nothing to do with dimensioning, but I've included it here. If you've got pictorial uh, views of a model and if you're not using shaded, you've got three tangent options and tangent edge is visible on the left tangent edges with font here in the middle and no tangent edges or tangent edges removed here. So usually we go with tangent edges with font if you're not using a shaded view. And we use this primarily for your pictorial views. We'll now go on and look at dimensioning in SolarWorks. So I'm going to bring in the Power Conrad assembly here and also its parts, which is the Power Conrad and the two bushings. Before I do that, I'll make a copy of this sheet here by control dragging it. Another way to make a copy of it is right click on the sheet there and go copy, and then right click again and go paste. And I'll select move to the end. Okay, so now we've made some copies of this sheet. If you want to rename the sheet. So we have another sub assembly that's the Displacer Conrad assembly. So let's rename this and let's also rename this one. So again, if you want to duplicate any of these sheets, just control drag it and drop it in there and you see the black arrow. Okay, let's go back now to our Power Conrad sheet. So on this sheet, let's go to the view palette. And the view palette, as you recall from the last time, is currently showing the views of the Stirling engine. So we need to browse here. 
So I can use the filter here to select assemblies. So this is the assembly we want, the Power Conrad. Click open. The views of the Power Conrad now appear and we just want the exploded isometric. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to drop that in there. You want to see a shaded view of that and you can place that there on our sheet. Scale. Let's scale it up a little bit. So I'm just going to click on this view here and I'm going to use a custom scale. User defined and if I'm going to scale it up, I'm going to say 1.5 is to 1 and just place that view there and that's it. Now I'm going to bring in the individual parts, change my filter here to parts. Here's the power conrad open. So now we have views just of the power conrad here. I'm going to bring in the right view. So there's the right view of the power conrad and you'll see it brings in the dimensions as well. We'll talk about this later and drag above it and we'll now have the view from above with the top view and again it brings in the dimensions there. If I drag off at an angle it gives the pictorial but I'm going to hit escape here. We don't need that right now. So these are your model dimensions and we can move these around just by dragging them and if you click on the arrows there you can move the arrows inside. So just moving these dimensions around you can position them appropriately on your drawing there. If I want to move these projection lines out I can drag them so that they don't overlap the drawing there. Again just doing this by eye. So you can click on any dimension and just move these. Okay, just leave a little gap there. Now there will be some dimensions which are difficult to display. Um, so this dimension here, the radius 16, uh, that's the way it displays at the minute. So if I go to its properties here and change it to inside, and you also have an option here, arc extension line, just experimenting with this. So just drag it around until you get it looking the way you want. Um, I'll just leave that one there. For any of these arcs here, if you click center mark, you can actually put a center mark on it. Now it's bringing in center lines as well. So I'm going to override this and turn off extended lines. So we'll just have a center mark there on the arc like that. Now if I click on this dimension here, we have this pop up that appears here and we can change the number of decimal places here and so this to be three. So this is a useful tool here and we can update our dimensions. Oh, I'm happy enough with that and this dimension here as well. So moving it around, it's currently displaying the two decimal places. Use the pop up here and let's go tolerance position, set that to three. And if you've added these in earlier, then it appears here. You can also use this um, dimension palette here to add in these tolerances so you have the maximum and minimum variation there. On the top view uh, you have what are called tangent lines here. These lines here that don't actually exist as edges. So to get rid of those tangent edges if you right click on the view tangent edge and set that to removed. Okay so that's that. So the views line up and I'm happy with that. You can scale that up if you wish. It's currently 1 is to 1. If I want to increase the scale of that to 1.5, let's right click on the properties of the sheet, change it to 1.5, apply changes. So now we can move that positioner there on the sheet. Okay, the other two parts, the two bushings. So I'm using the options here to show using large icons. So that's visual way of seeing your parts. So the begin bush, click open. And you'll notice here that we have import annotations ticked. So the auto start projected view will automatically project the view off of the first view that you bring in. So let's say I bring in the front view of this. And there it is there and drag and there is the other view. Okay, or the top view in this case. So that's okay, hit the green check. 
And again, you can move these dimension values around. If you don't have the tolerances on them, you can use the pop up here and you can go in here and add those there. So there's the limit, it's already added from our sketch. Browse for the small in bush, small in bush. It updates, same as before. Let's bring in the view. Auto project off it. There's the other view, and it brings in those dimensions there. So you can bring in a pictorial if you want, but there's no need here. So let's click OK, or escape, whichever you wish. You can move these around, and that's our dimension. So these dimensions that we brought in here are model dimensions. If you double click on them, and actually you can modify the sizes of the components. So these dimensions have come in from the model and are model dimensions. And that's really powerful because you full bi-directional associativity here between your drawing and your model. So if you discover a mistake at this stage, you could edit your dimension here and your model would update in the part file and that would up subsequently update in the assembly as well. Okay. So let's bring in model dimensions. Uh, Control Q acquired here just to rebuild our drawing. Okay, so that's model dimensions brought in. In our next video, I'll look at dimensions that we create inside in the drawing itself and also look at some more options with adding dimensions that we bring in from our model. Thank you.